Welcome back. Welcome back. It was the news that Western leaders had been waiting to hear for days. At a press conference earlier this week, President Hamid Karzai finally conceded that he had not won an outright majority in August's presidential election in Afghanistan after the Electoral Com Complaints Commission had uncovered widespread fraud on Monday. And I'm joined now by Zalmay Khalilzad, who is, of course, the America's former ambassador to Afghanistan, born in Afghanistan, a counselor with the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington now. Ambassador, it's, it's very good to have you with us. Do you think this is the best solution, a runoff election, or would you have preferred a unity government with Mr. Abdullah? I think uh, uh, it, this is a better option, uh, uh, certainly more difficult in some ways, uh, because uh, it provides for the Afghan people uh, to choose their president. Uh, the outcome will have greater legitimacy uh, than uh, a deal between uh, Dr. Abdullah and Mr. Karzai. Uh, and uh, therefore, I think uh, on balance, this is, this is uh, a better outcome. One of the papers here suggested today that in the build-up to the election, they might still strike a deal. Could they possibly do that? I will not uh, uh, rule it out uh, because of the difficulties of organizing an election. Uh, uh, you know, in some parts of the country, weather is a factor already. Uh, the, the time to uh, surge enough capability, civilian and military in different parts to ensure a good election is limited. Uh, so I can see that some in the international community, in particular, uh, would prefer still to have a unity government uh, than an election, and therefore uh, I do not rule it out. Uh, but uh, a unity government uh, would have its own challenges. Absolutely, of course, of course it would. And uh, <coughs> the papers here say different things. There will be only if the if the runoff election goes ahead. There will just be the two candidates, the two leading candidates? That's right. That's what the Afghan constitution requires, that if no candidate gets 50% uh, plus in the first round, the two leading candidates then go against each other in the second round. That's, that's good, because that means that the, the, the crisis and the tension can't continue indefinitely. Um, do you think that the way we've been treating President Camp Hamid Karzai has been fair, I mean, or have we been uh, uncognizant of all he's done so far? I think uh, uh, he has done some important things for his country, uh, but at the same time, I think uh, there is a, a sense, a justified sense, that he could have done a lot better in dealing with the issues confronting Afghanistan, such as the, the uh, issues of corruption, governance. Um, and that he has not been particularly skillful in recent times in dealing with the international community. Uh, on the other hand, I think uh, uh, I have been a critic of, of uh, the way that at least some people in Washington have dealt with him. Uh, uh, they have made it too obvious at times that they would like to have another Afghan leader. Uh, sometimes meetings have been... Uh, unnecessarily uh, hostile, uh, and there has been a sense that some people in the administration have a personal vendetta against them. Uh, and uh, I think uh, 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 if he is uh, the winner of the upcoming election, I, uh, I think the, uh, Washington and perhaps to a lesser degree London would have to uh, develop a new framework of an understanding and relationship because uh, for uh, the world to succeed in Afghanistan, they will need his cooperation. And he would have to do better than he has done in recent years because he cannot succeed, his country cannot succeed without support uh, from Washington and London and other places that are important for Afghanistan. And so the pressure, the pressure on President Karzai from Washington would come from Richard Holbrooke and the White House, would it? Are they both in sync in uh, 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 dealing with Karzai in this way? 
I, I, I don't know whether everybody has been in sync in terms of uh, some of the list uh, than skillful ways of dealing with them, uh, but certainly uh, uh, some uh, of the uh, uh, individuals in senior positions uh, have been dealing with them in a counterproductive way. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, Washington needs a, 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 an Afghan leader, President Karzai in this case, that they can work with, and I think the way he was treated uh, uh, increased mutual suspicion. Karzai felt that there was a conspiracy uh, against him. Uh, in fact, when I saw him uh, just a few days ago, uh, I spent many days in Kabul meeting with him and, and Dr. Abdullah and others. He was certain in his own mind, he told me, that he had won the election and that there were some people in Washington and perhaps in London who were intentionally pushing his votes down below 50 percent. Uh, and uh, I was urging him not to think that way, but, but to cooperate uh, uh, with the uh, uh, Complaint Commission uh, 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 and, and uh, to uh, move the country forward, because uh, if he was to reject uh, the findings of the Complaint Commission, there would have been a constitutional crisis in Afghanistan and a serious crisis in relations between the government of Afghanistan, President Karzai, and the international community. Of course, there are those, quite a number, who think that the solution to the future of Afghanistan is you, is you as chief executive officer of Afghanistan. Uh, the, uh, well, there has been for some time, even when I was representing the United States in the United Nations until January, uh, that uh, uh, speculation and uh, calls that I should uh, run for the presidency of Afghanistan. See, I, as you know, I was born in Afghanistan, uh, and uh, then I served there as the U.S. ambassador and presidential envoy for some time. And that period now is regarded by comparison to what has happened subsequently to have been a successful one. But I had made it clear that uh, I did not uh, uh, intend to run for the presidency of Afghanistan, and, and I did not. Now, with regard to uh, the chief executive officer of the country, that, uh, again, this issue has been raised, and I have said that while I have a soft spot for Afghanistan, I, I would like to help it, uh, but uh, I think uh, um, it would be inappropriate for me as the former American ambassador there to be seeking a position uh, in Afghanistan, but I am prepared uh, to help, uh, and one can help from a variety of, uh, of, uh, of positions, uh, 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 not necessarily from a uh, position in the government there. Uh, I do intend to spend some time uh, helping Afghanistan after the election results uh, have been finalized. Well, thank you, Ambassador, so much for for joining us today, and I'm sure that will be good news to a great many people who support the great work that they think you're going to go and do in Afghanistan. Thank you very much indeed for being with us, Ambassador. Now, is he an artist or is he a sculptor? I'll be asking Anish Kapoor, creator of some of the weirdest, most ambitious installations that you'll ever see, certainly in an art gallery. All of that in a minute.